Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain the grotesque mansion. This movie tells the story of a horror webtoon writer who visits the grotesque mansion and hears spooky stories from the people around there. Will he escape from the mansion alive? Let's find out in the grotesque mansion. The grotesque mansion tells the story of a young man named Jiwoo who works as a webtoon writer with a horror genre. Currently, Jiwoo is at a stalemate of ideas to produce a new work, so he decides to go to Gwanglim Mansion. This rundown apartment complex is said to be very haunted. He intended to find inspiration for his new webtoon series. When Jiwoo had just set foot there, he had already seen the appearance of a boy's figure reflected from the mirror in front of him. However, when he looks back, he finds no one there. Instead of being afraid, he is even more excited to uncover all the horrific events surrounding Gwanglim Mansion. Jiwoo then meets an old man who serves as caretaker at the apartment building. Without further ado, he immediately explained the purpose of his arrival to the caretaker and took out a recording device while asking for permission to record their conversation. The caretaker, who did not want to be named, then told him that a great fire at Gwanglim Mansion killed orphans in the past. According to the caretaker, there have been many rumors about ghosts in the apartment building since the fire incident. The residents of the apartment began to hear strange noises and experience terrible events. Caretaker begins his story with the incident experienced by a man named Yoon Hoon, who occupies apartment number 504. From the first time he saw the room, Yoon Hoon had heard the sound of children laughing cheerfully downstairs and asked about it to the real estate agent who offered him a residence at Gwanglim Mansion. The broker wasn't so sure, but one thing was for sure, according to the broker, children did come and go during the holidays. Yoon Hoon doesn't think about it any further and decides to occupy the apartment because of the quiet atmosphere he really needs to write his novel. However, Yoon Hoon who deliberately came to Gwanglim Mansion to get a quiet and calm atmosphere to write his novel, seems to have to swallow disappointment because he began to be disturbed by various strange events in his apartment, the sound of children making noise until the floor vibrates, as well as their belongings that often move places. At first, Yoon Hoon chose to ignore the awkwardness and chose to focus on his novel project because he was having problems with his wife and family. One day, Yoon Hoon goes to a pharmacy not far from Gwanglim Mansion to buy some headache medicine. Returning from there, he then turns on his laptop and goes to the kitchen to get a glass of water. The weirdness begins when Yoon Hoon returns from the kitchen and realizes that his laptop is gone. The man didn't find his laptop anywhere, and instead found a worn-out children's shoe lying on the floor. When he checked the name on the shoe, suddenly there was the sound of a hard object being dropped from above and the sound of children. Yoon Hoon who finds his laptop has been dropped by someone, then reports the incident to the caretaker. Yoon Hoon and the caretaker find no one entering Yoon Hoon's apartment, when they check the CCTV camera footage. But Yoon Hoon insists that he always hears the voices of the children downstairs who also make a lot of noise by poking at the floor. However, the caretaker then ensures that no children are living in the apartment downstairs. Out of curiosity and feeling that the caretaker would not follow up on his complaint, Yoon Hoon then went to apartment number 404 which was directly below his apartment. Yoon Hoon bangs on the door of apartment number 404, but there's no answer. Peering through the hole in the door, he saw four pairs of children's shoes neatly arranged. Outside the apartment, he finds a pair of shoes from the shoes lying in his room and is increasingly convinced that the child does live in apartment number 404. Screaming angrily, he orders the boy out, but still no answer. In the end, he threw away all the shoes in return. That night, when Yoon Hoon wakes up after hearing a strange noise, he finds the trash bag he used to throw away the children's shoes, already inside his apartment. Yoon Hoon, who was still surprised to see the trash bag containing the children's shoes, was suddenly startled by a loud banging on his apartment door. When he peeked through the door, he saw the figures of three small children standing with their backs to them looking down. One of the kids turns around and faces his face in the doorway, making Yoon Hoon startle and fall. The weirdness doesn't stop there. The children's shoes that were in the trash bag consisted of only a few pairs of shoes when Yoon Hoon threw them away. But when he turns around, the shoes have been strewn everywhere and the number is in the hundreds of pairs. Yoon Hoon again hears the children's voices and when he looks up, he sees three figures of children hanging from the ceiling in a spooky state. We don't know what happened to Yoon Hoon after the terrible incident because the writer was rumored to have disappeared and the story ended. Ji Woo confirms this because he has heard the story of a famous novelist who reportedly disappeared two years ago. The caretaker then continued his story. This time it's about the story of a woman named Soon Hwa who lives in apartment number 907. One day, Soon Hwa who was at her apartment, 
heard the news about a man who killed his wife and children through radio broadcasts. The scene then switches to showing Yung Hoon who is buying headache medicine at a pharmacy. As it turns out, the pharmacist serving Yung Hoon is Soon Wah, who is secretly in a forbidden love affair with a married man named Ho Jun. After Yung Hoon leaves, Soon Wah's co-worker appears from behind her and advises her to be careful when dating someone's husband. Soon Wah seems to ignore it because she then gets a phone call from Ho Jun telling her that he will stop by her place that night. Ho Jun's voice sounds odd over the phone. Even the man immediately turned off the phone. Soon Wah, who is still surprised by her boyfriend's strange voice, is then startled by her co-worker. Soon Wah chooses not to think about the awkwardness and returns to her apartment. That night, Ho Jun comes to Soon Wah's apartment soaking wet. Ho Jun, who looks depressed, says that his wife already knows about his affair with Soon Wah. Not wanting to bother, Soon Wah then orders Ho Jun to divorce his wife so he can marry her. Ho Jun looks surprised to hear Soon Wah's words because taking care of a divorce is not as easy as turning the palm of the hand. Ho Jun says that he will stay at Soon Wah's apartment for a while and asks her to keep his whereabouts a secret. Soon Wah suddenly wakes up from her sleep when she hears a strange sound outside the room. She tries to wake Ho Jun, but the man seems too tired to fall into a deep sleep. Soon Wah finally decides to check it herself and sees a shadow of someone in the bathroom. Even though she's scared, she still dares to check into the bathroom. However, no one was there. Soon Wah only finds the bathroom light on, the shower dripping water because it doesn't close tightly, and the sound of the radio lying there. The next day, while Soon Wah is at work, two police officers come to the pharmacy and ask her about Ho Jun. According to the police statement, Ho Jun was named a suspect in the case of the murder of his wife and child. Soon Wah then lies to the police and says that she doesn't know where Ho Jun is. However, on the way home, Soon Wah thinks about what the police said earlier and assumes that Ho Jun is the man who killed his wife and child whom she heard about on the radio. That's why, Ho Jun asks her to keep his whereabouts in her apartment a secret. Arriving at the apartment, Soon Wah then locked the door and saw the silhouette of Ho Jun taking a shower. Soon Wah then finds Ho Jun's clothes covered in bloodstains lying on the floor. Soon Wah, who intends to run away with Ho Jun, immediately cleans up the blood-soaked clothes and packs her things in a hurry. Hearing the sound of police car sirens wailing in the distance, she panics even more and yells at Ho Jun to finish his shower and leave because the police have already detected them. But strangely, Ho Jun doesn't respond to her words and just repeats the sentence please don't tell anyone that I take a shower here. In a panic, Soon Wah is startled by a knock on the door, which is Ho Jun. Sensing that something is wrong, Soon Wah opens the door and tells Ho Jun about the man in the bathroom who keeps saying words like a broken record. Ho Jun then grabs an axe and walks towards the bathroom. However, when he arrived at the bathroom door, he then turned around and said that Soon Wah shouldn't tell anyone that he showered here. The whole room was suddenly covered in blood and looks like it was Ho Jun who carved a hideous grin on his blood-splattered face. The scene then switches and shows Ji Wu meeting with the broker to hear his story. The broker turned out to be in one of the apartments in Guanglim Mansion. That night, the broker returns to his apartment and complains as usual to a girl doll he already considers his partner. The doll's head looked a little damaged and the broker kept urging the doll manufacturer to send a new one, but there was no response. After dinner, the broker realized that the sink was clogged and called a plumber to fix it. The next day, the plumber checked the sink's drain pipe and found a large coil of hair that was causing the sink to clog. Even though it was fixed, the sink was still clogged, even occasionally leaking dirty water. Not only that, the broker began to experience strange events such as seeing a mysterious hand that closed the water faucet in the bathroom his doll that often moved and the doll's bracelet lying on the floor. At work, his co-workers try to warn the broker about the ghost rumors surrounding Guanglin Mansion, but the broker tried to ignore it. That evening, as usual, the broker was having dinner accompanied by his doll. Another strange sound rang through the sink, and when the broker's attention focused on the package that had appeared in the sink, the doll turned and moved on its own. Noticing that there was movement behind him, the broker turned around and saw that his doll was lying down. The broker, who thought it was just a matter of course, then looked back and was surprised to find that the package, which contained nothing but the head of a doll that could move on its own, was now right in front of his face. The frightened broker ran away and locked himself in his room. The man panicked even more because the light suddenly went out. The broker tried to light a lighter in the darkness and found that his foot stepped on a plastic wrap. The broker sensed something behind him, which was none other than the head of a doll that had a sinister expression on it. The broker closes the story with a shudder of fear and goes on and on. He said that it's not his fault, he was just trying to market the apartment. The man then tells Ji Wu that he may have been cursed by the Guanglin church followers while pulling his stumped hand out from under the covers. Thanks to the scary stories of Guanglin Mansion, 
Jiwoo was able to finish the webtoon series, which turned out to get such a good response from readers. The publisher asked Jiwoo to continue the scary story while offering a more lucrative deal. Of course, Jiwoo becomes even more intrigued to continue the ghost story of Gwanglam Mansion. An excited Jiwoo is ready to return to Gwanglam Mansion to dig deeper into the scary stories in Gwanglam Mansion, even though his girlfriend, Dai, has tried to stop him because she is worried for his safety. Arriving at Gwanglam Mansion, Jiwoo asks the caretaker to tell the other scary stories covering the apartment building and promises to do anything and give the caretaker anything he wants. The caretaker, who seems pleased to see Jiwoo's excitement, then tells about the scary story on the sixth floor. A young man named Tihun visits his friend who lives on the sixth floor of Gwanglam Mansion. At that time, Tihun had just returned from abroad because he failed his desired university entrance exam. Tihun plans to hitch a ride at his friend's house for a while. When he enters Zi Suk's apartment, Tihun is very surprised by the apartment's condition is dirty and covered with mold here and there. Tihun says that he intends to stay for two weeks. Zi Suk happily welcomes his friend, saying that Tihun can stay longer because his parents allow him to stay with him. In fact, all this time Zi Suk only lived alone. Not only that, Zi Suk also looks weird with an abnormally growing pimple on his face and his penchant for eating stale food. The following day, Tihun wakes up and sees Zi Suk vacuuming in the living room. After that, Zi Suk says he'll be gone until late and tells Tihun to relax and let him eat all the food in the apartment. However, when Tihun checks the fridge, he only finds all the food stale. The whole room in the apartment had been covered with mold, but there was one room that was much dirtier than the others as if mold had been nesting in there for years and had never been cleaned. Disgusted, Tihun then buys a room cleaner to eradicate mold and bacteria and cleans the entire room in Zi Suk's apartment until it's completely clean. Even though Tihun seems satisfied with the results of his hard work cleaning the mold infested apartment, Zi Suk is not the same as getting angry because Tihun cleaned his apartment. Feeling that something is wrong, Tihun immediately packs his things and intends to leave Zi Suk's apartment right then and there. Tihun tries to call his other friend when he sees a black shadow on the floor that resembles a human. The phone line is immediately cut off and Tihun feels something moving on the ceiling behind him. When he looked back, there was nothing there and the black shadow on the floor had disappeared as well. The door to the room behind Tihun suddenly opened by itself and Tihun, curious, tried to check the room. He was very surprised because the room he had just cleaned this morning, suddenly filled with mold as usual. Shortly after that, Zi Suk entered the room in a state of walking backward and hiding his face. Zi Suk apologizes for getting angry at Tihun, but he also says his parents are not happy with Tihun's actions. Zi Suk then shows his ugly and slimy face as he tells Tihun that his parents have forgiven his actions and allowed him to live here with them. The frightened Tihun then backed away slowly, but suddenly his body was pulled by black hands that came from the mold-covered walls and trapped him in the Guanglin mansion for good. After the story ends, Jiwoo asks the caretaker about the terrible events that continue to be experienced by the residents of Guanglin mansion. Jiwoo confronts the caretaker and asks about the cult of the devil-worshipping cult church that was once founded on the land where the Guanglin mansion was built. The caretaker then gives Jiwoo a key and asks him to find out for himself. On the other hand, Dai, who is bored, plays a tape recording of Jiwoo in the caretaker's interview during his first visit to Guanglin Mansion. However, Dai only hears Jiwoo's voice asking questions, and doesn't hear anyone else's voice. Sensing that something is wrong, she rushes to Guanglin Mansion. Meanwhile, Jiwoo, who is taking the elevator to apartment number 1504, following directions from the caretaker, has a scary incident with a man in a hat who behaves strangely. After successfully escaping from the man in the hat, Jiwoo finally arrived at apartment number 1504. After going inside, he saw that the room was filled with talisman papers hanging everywhere. Jiwoo finds a tape lying on the floor and plays it using a tape recorder. A caretaker's voice said as if the tape was meant for Jiwoo alone. The caretaker then told about his own story. The recording reveals the fact that the caretaker is not the caretaker of the Guanglim mansion. Long ago, the caretaker was a robber who intended to break into the money safe at Guanglim Mansion with his partner named He Dong, who was none other than the man in the mysterious hat who was after Ji Wu. Just like now, apartment number 1504 had also been filled with talismans when caretaker and He Dong entered it years ago. There's a cupboard that catches He Dong's attention and blood sticks to it. When He Dong shone the flashlight on the other side of the closet, he saw hair as if it was being pulled into the cupboard. A frightened He Dong tells the caretaker about this and suggests leaving the place. But caretaker ignored him, because he still wanted to continue his action. Not far from there, there is a corpse wrapped in amulet paper, which is believed to be the leader of the devil worship sect at Guanglim Mansion. The caretaker found a key in the mouth of the body and then took it. 
After that, he used the key to open the cupboard and managed to find a safe containing a lot of money. Soon, He Dong hears the sound of chains being moved and realizes that the body is gone. Not only the body is missing, the caretaker's whereabouts are also unknown. In complete darkness with only a flashlight, He Dong hears the sound of chains again and sees a corpse that has supernaturally risen again, now moving towards him. A terrified He Dong runs frantically to the door, but it's locked and when He Dong turns around, the undead is standing right in front of him. After trying to get out of apartment number 1504, He Dong finally makes it back to the car, but he can't find the car keys anywhere. He again hears the sound of chains moving which turns out to be caretaker. The old man then got into the car and said that he also saw the undead. However, the caretaker behaves strangely and asks him do you want to see him again? And suddenly the caretaker turns into the undead in apartment 1504 and kills him immediately. Back in the present, Ji Wu finally sees the cupboard the caretaker is referring to, and the evil spirit that resides in the corpse appears behind Ji Wu. The young man suddenly felt scared and ran to the closet to hide. The caretaker then enters the room and tells Ji Wu that his time with Ji Wu has been very memorable to him as he smiles and walks away, leaving Ji Wu trapped forever in the closet, without anyone to hear his screams. Meanwhile, Dai Yi who arrives at Guanglim Mansion, meets Ji Wu who says that he will stay in Guanglim Mansion forever, implying that he has become a wandering ghost and the film ends.